Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. India dismisses Park's baseless charge of targeted killings. Indian president highlights country's robust stance against terrorism. And several killed after rebel attacks in Park's Balochistan. Let's begin the show with Pakistan's baseless accusation against India. A top Pakistani official recently accused New Delhi of orchestrating extrajudicial killings on Pakistan's territory. India, however, vehemently rejected the accusations, labeling them as false and malicious anti-India propaganda. Pakistan is reaping only what it sowed. It has perhaps forgotten its tumultuous history, which has been marred by political coups, internal unrest and targeted assassinations of prominent figures. Our report. Pakistan has developed a consistent pattern of attributing false accusations against India. This time the country is accusing India of assassinating its citizens. On January 25th in a news conference, Pakistan Foreign Secretary Mohammad Sajid Sajjad Qazi accused India of killing two Pakistani nationals on its soil. The Pakistani official claimed that Islamabad had credible evidence of links between Indian agents and the assassination of Pakistani nationals. We have credible evidence of the links between Indian agents and the assassination of two Pakistani nationals on Pakistani soil. These are killings for hire cases involving a sophisticated international setup spread over multiple jurisdictions. The two men were killed last year, one in Sialkot in Pakistan's Punjab province. His name was Shahid Latif. He was a key aide of terror organization Jaish e Muhammad and the mastermind of the 2016 attack on the Indian Air Force base in Pathan Court. The second killing was in Ravlakot in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, Riaz Ahmad Ilyas Abu Qasim, a Lashkar terrorist. He was shot dead by unidentified gunmen inside the Al Quds Mosque during pre-dawn prayers. He was one of the main conspirators behind the Dhangri terror attack in Jammu and Kashmir on 1st January 2023. Pakistan's stance alleges that India orchestrated the murders through an Indian agent operating in a third country. The alleged agent purportedly recruited assassins, dispatched them to Pakistan and executed the targets. An Indian agent, Yogesh Kumar, based in a third country, orchestrated the assassination. Yogesh Kumar recruited Muhammad Umair, a laborer in that third country, to act as a contract, as a contact with local criminals in Pakistan to trace and assassinate Shahid Latif. They recruited local criminals who were able to locate and trace Shahid Latif. However, they were unable to carry out the execution. After some other failed attempts, Muhammad himself was personally sent to Pakistan to carry out the assassination. India, however, vehemently rejected the accusations labeling them as false and malicious anti-India propaganda. In a sternly worded statement, India's Ministry of External Affairs emphasized Pakistan's long-standing association with terrorism, organized crime and illegal transnational activities. India, along with numerous other nations, has publicly cautioned Pakistan about the repercussions of perpetuating a culture of terror and violence. Pakistan serves as a haven for numerous terrorist organizations, some of which enjoy tacit support from the state, while others actively oppose it. Moreover, Pakistan's tumultuous history is marred by political coup, internal unrest 
and targeted assassinations of prominent figures. Just last year, former Prime Minister Imran Khan narrowly escaped an assassination attempt when his anti-government protest convoy was attacked in the eastern region of the country, highlighting the pervasive threats to political stability and security within Pakistan. So if you look at the record, Pakistan's re record or practice of dealing with political dissidents, of dealing with people who have operated outside the law has never been constitutional. They are never taken to courts. They are generally either marginalized, murdered, done away with. You can choose whatever phrase you want to choose. So whatever is going on is inside Pakistan is actually the creation and the actions of the Pakistani deep state. To accuse India, therefore, of creating mayhem in Pakistan is ridiculous. Pakistan's statement regarding the killings, supposedly orchestrated from a third country, comes on the heels of allegations from Canada and the United States implicating Indian agents in plotting the assassinations of Khalistani separatists overseas. While India strongly rebutted Canada's accusation of Indian agents being involved in the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijjar in Surrey in June 2023, India has committed to investigating the claims made by the United States. They fit the pattern of similar cases which have come to light in other countries including Canada and the United States. Clearly, the Indian network of extrajudicial and extraterritorial killings has become a global phenomenon. Pakistan finds itself grappling with a faltering economy, burdened by a population facing poverty and staggering inflation rates nearing 30%. Yet amidst these pressing concerns, their attention remains fixated on the death of terrorists. Pakistan fails to acknowledge this perspective mourning the loss of what they perceive as two upright citizens. Despite the repercussions, the country persists in its unwavering support for terrorists, disregarding the broader ramifications of their actions. Addressing the joint sitting of parliament at the beginning of budget session, India's President Draupadi Murmu highlighted New Delhi's robust stance against terrorism. Calling India leading voice in the world against terrorism, President said the country is playing a very significant role against terrorism on the global level. She also assessed that there is a sense of security in Jammu and Kashmir, which is witnessing the positive transformations. Take a look. Terrorism is the biggest threat to international peace and security. To fight against the menace, Countries need to join hands, putting aside their differences. India remains an important ally in the global war on terrorism. It has been fighting against terrorism for several years while learning a great deal from success and failures. New Delhi has time and again called on the international community to cooperate in combating terrorism. Addressing the joint sitting of parliament at the beginning of budget session, India's President Draupadi Murmu highlighted New Delhi's robust stance against terrorism. The President said that India is leading voice in the world against terrorism. संकट में फंसी मानवता की मदद के लिए मजबूती से पहल करता है दुनिया में कहीं भी संकट आने पर भारत वहां तेजी से पहुंचने का प्रयास करता है मेरी सरकार ने दुनिया भर के काम कर रहे भारतीयों में नया भरोसा जगाया है In the backdrop of various conflicts and global turmoil the Indian government has established the country as a Vishwa Mitra or friend of the world in these difficult times. In the address, President also said there is a sense of security in Jammu and Kashmir. 
President Murmu went on to describe the positive transformations in the region. माननीय सदस्यगण मेरी सरकार आज पूरी सीमा पर मॉडर्न इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बना रही है ये काम बहुत पहले ही प्राथमिकता के आधार पर हो जाना चाहिए था आतंकवाद हो या विस्तारवाद हमारी सेनाएं आज जैसे को तैसा की नीति के साथ जवाब दे रही है आंतरिक शांति के लिए मेरी सरकार के प्रयासों के स्वार्थक परिणाम हमारे सामने हैं। जम्मू कश्मीर में आज सुरक्षा का वातावरण है आज वहाँ हड़ताल का सन्नाटा नहीं भीड़ भरे बाजार की चल पहल है चल पहल है In her address, President Murmu noted that India's actual capabilities were showcased globally through major international events. India is playing a significant role against terrorism on the global level. In 2021, India had begun its two-year term as a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, where it chaired the Counter-Terrorism Committee, the 1988. Taliban Sanctions Committee and the Libya Sanctions Committee. India has leadership roles in the regional and international fora where it has promoted multilateral counterterrorism cooperation. India shares counterterrorism information with several countries including Bangladesh, Maldives and Sri Lanka. India's defense relationships with Canada, France and Russia The United Kingdom also extend to counterterrorism issues. Let's shift our focus to Pakistan's Balochistan province, where the rebel group targeted military and security installations with guns and rockets in the city of Mach. According to reports, several Pakistani security officials were killed in the overnight attack. The Baloch Liberation Army has initiated Operation Darai Bolan in the Mach and Bolan regions of Balochistan. in alliance with the BLA's elite units including the Majid Brigade Special Tactical Operations Squad Fateh Squad and Intelligence Wing airport four pakistani security officials were killed in an overnight attack in pakistan's southwestern balochistan province baloch liberation army or bla an armed rebel group in the region claimed responsibility for the attack The rebel group targeted military and security installations with guns and rockets in the city of Mach, 65 km south of Balochistan's capital Quetta. Recently, the Baloch Liberation Army has initiated Operation Darai Bolan in the Mach and Bolan regions of Balochistan in alliance with the BLA's elite units including the Majid Brigade, Special Tactical Operations Squad, Fatah Squad and Intelligence Wing. Jian Baloch the spokesperson for the BLA advised residents in Mach city and the surrounding areas to stay indoors and avoid highways due to ongoing activities. The operation has reportedly resulted in extensive damage to Mach jail and several government buildings. BLA forces are believed to have seized control of multiple railway stations and are engaging in combat at various locations. including the FC commandant's office and jail colony BLA calls itself the armed front of the secessionist Balochistan movement seeking independence from Pakistan This situation highlights the escalating conflict in the area and the BLA's increased targeting of the Pakistani army The Baloch Liberation Army have launched this attack operation I would say the rai balochistan on sorry the rai bolan on 29th of january uh, 2024 and it was ended on the evening of 31st of january 2024 so that operation lasted for over 2 days and the baloch liberation army claimed it has killed over 60 military personnel it has targeting many military and governmental you know uh, installation in that area bla has captured over 70 km long area where footage shows that they 
freedom fighters of Baloch Liberation Army are walking on the streets of much and this was a historical attack by any Baloch militant organization in the history of Baloch resistance movement against Pakistan. Meanwhile, a large number of people from parts of Balochistan gathered to participate in the Baloch Yagjahiti Committee's protest in Balochistan's capital city, Quetta. Baloch activists who were staging a sit-in in Islamabad since last month against human rights abuses in Balochistan province called off their demonstration. Baloch protesters were demonstrating in the federal capital since December 20, 2023 denouncing enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings. Last month, Islamabad police cracked down on Baloch demonstrators and demolished camps set up outside the National Press Club. The majority of the demonstrators were arrested by police, which provoked outrage throughout the nation. The administration first justified the crackdown, saying it was a necessary precaution to avert a catastrophe been you know since its inception it has never uh, provided justice to Balochistan and the people of Balochistan the Baloch people it has done exactly the same thing this time so the families of the Baloch missing persons were in Islamabad protesting in cold weather and Islamabad was instead of providing them justice instead of uh, sympathizing with them instead of listening to their uh, painful stories they start blaming the victims they start blaming the protesters they start blaming the leaders of Baloch Jati committee they start blaming the doctor uh, Dr. Maharang Baloch, Samidin Baloch and other leaders of the Baloch uh, Yakjati committee and vice for Baloch missing person and they just uh, show the world what their real face is, how ignorant the Pakistani state is, how brutal the Pakistani state is. Balochistan's history is marked by regular insurgencies following Pakistan's annexation of the autonomous Baloch state of Kalat in 1948. Baloch groups have consistently clashed with Pakistani security forces, demanding their rights and autonomy for ethnic Baloch regions or complete freedom from the clutches of Islamabad. In the last five to seven years, what uh, we are seeing and what we are witnessing, it is that their intensity in their attack is growing. Despite what the Pakistan army is claiming, despite what the Pakistan army is saying that this, the militants are surrendering, that they have, you know, some organizational leaders, they have surrendered. Even after that, the number of the Baloch militants are increasing. Civilians have suffered greatly from these conflicts, facing unlawful detentions and extrajudicial killings by military, police and paramilitary personnel. Global media outlets have time and again highlighted the discovery of hundreds of bodies of suspected armed separatists and political activists in Balochistan province, pointing to extrajudicial killings by Pakistani security forces. Numerous projects, including mining and energy initiatives, have disproportionately benefited outsiders while depriving locals of resources and job opportunities. These grievances have fueled protests against targeted killings and false encounters, both within Balochistan and in Western countries. In the absence of enough international support, some Baloch rebels say they had to pick guns as a last-ditch effort to raise their demands and save their dignity. Moving on. A joint operation conducted by the Jammu and Kashmir police and the Indian Army successfully dismantled the lashkar e taiba terror module in the Kupwara district of North Kashmir. The operation led to the arrest of five terror associates operating in the region. These associates were involved in smuggling arms and ammunition across the border under the instructions of their Pakistani handlers. Airport. 
The stringent security measures along the line of control have foiled the attempts of Pakistan-based terrorist groups to infiltrate into the region of Jammu and Kashmir. Consequently, these groups are now turning their attention to ensnaring local Kashmiri youth for recruitment into their ranks and smuggling arms and ammunition in the region. On January 27, a joint operation conducted by the Jammu and Kashmir police and the Indian Army successfully dismantled a lashkar e taiba terror module in the Kupwara district of Kashmir. This operation led to the arrest of five terror associates operating in the region. These associates were involved in smuggling arms and ammunition across the border under the instructions of their Pakistani handlers. Among those apprehended was Zahoor Ahmed Bhatt, a resident of Karna in Jammu and Kashmir who had been in contact with LET handlers across the border. The security forces confiscated a huge cache of arms including 5 AK rifles and magazines and 16 AK rounds from the arrested associates. Kupwara police or 9 parafield regiment ne ek khususi itla jisko hamare aur bhi counter parts ya sister agencies ne corroborate kiya tha uske aadhar par ek terror module jo ki cross border originated hai usko unearth kiya hai usko bust kiya hai jisme abhi tak 5 logon ko giraftar kiya hai ye terror module do log जो कि करना के ही ओरिजिनली रहने वाले हैं और अब वो पाकिस्तान में जाके इलीगल ट्रेनिंग के लिए गए थे और वहां से अब उसको ऑपरेट करके चला रहे हैं सिंस द एब्रोगेशन ऑफ आर्टिकल 370 एंड आर्टिकल 35 ए फ्रॉम जम्मू एंड कश्मीर द सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस हैव टाइटेंड देयर ग्रिप ओवर द अनलॉफुल एक्टिविटीज स्पेशली दोस रिस्पांसिबल फॉर डिस्ट्रप्टिंग पीस एंड ब्रदरहुड इन द यूनियन टेरिटरी there has been an overall development in Jammu and Kashmir, especially in building infrastructure, tourism, opening of new businesses and job opportunities for the Kashmiri youth. This is not suitable to Pakistan's agenda and the country is trying to activate its terror module by misleading the youth to join terror outfits. Pakistan is making all-out attempt to speed up terrorism in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The reasons are very, very obvious. If you look at the state of terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir, it is seen that there is absolutely no terror activities taking place in Ladakh or up north. The terrorists today are scared of attacking the security forces and the terror attacks are actually restricted to only attacking the soft targets so therefore, terrorism as such is not looking up at all. And this is after great attempt by Pakistan to increase it. So uh, as far as Pakistan is concerned, uh, Kashmir is an obsession for them. They are not bothered about their economic problems. They are not bothered about their political problems. But they feel that uh, Kashmir, they must speak about. And one would remember that some time back, when there was an economic meet of G20 countries, the Pakistani foreign minister who came there to speak in the economic meet, instead of talking about economic affairs, spoke about Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir is heading towards rapid development and the people are reaping the peace dividends due to policies of the center. The people of Jammu and Kashmir have realized about the loss they have suffered in the past seven decades due to terrorism and violence. Pakistan's propaganda on Jammu and Kashmir at the international level has also been exposed as the areas of erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir in its forceful occupation are suffering rampant poverty, corruption, high inflation and unemployment. The promoters of terrorism are suffering due to their own karma. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. 
Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.